Let's get with Ian Castleberry because we got lots of baseball to run down. Ian, how you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good, man. For a Monday, not too bad. We got we're, we're getting you know running over a lot of ground because, of course, of Super Bowl Fifty Four. But we got a lot of baseball to get to as well because. Well, quite frankly, it seems like it never ends. And uh, Ian's update, talking Major League Baseball, presented by Andrea and Greg at Vistanet Telecommunications. All right, Ian, let's get to it. First things first, rumors continue to gain steam involving um, Boston's Mookie Betts being traded to the Dodgers. What? Ian, how serious are the two teams, or is this just that, a rumor? No, I think this is pretty serious. The Dodgers have been uh, attached to uh, Mookie Betts for a while. I think they see an opportunity to at least get one year out of him, which for some teams, that's not a that's not a good deal for them. You know, they want Betts for multiple seasons, especially if they're going to give up top prospects. But the Dodgers looking at this a little bit differently. You know, if they get Mookie Betts for one year, even though he's $27 million, they have a deep farm system still. They can afford to give up some of the players they're talking about, including one of their young outfielders, Alex Verdugo, who would be a nice replacement for Mookie Betts in Boston. But you know, adding a player of Mookie Betts' caliber, a former American League most valuable player, adding him to that lineup, you know, the Dodgers are once again viewed as a favorite uh, in the National League. And if they don't face the Houston Astros and their sign-stealing scheme, maybe they'll actually win it. You know, what's interesting in all of this is that the Red Sox did say that they were going to kind of pull back on, you know, spending. And yet they we, we talked about a little bit of a spending spree just a couple of weeks ago. How much is the finance involved in this potential deal? I think it is certainly a factor, $27 million that would be trimmed off their payroll. But, you know, they'll get production out of Mookie Betts. I, I think they're, they're just looking to get something for him in return uh, rather than lose him possibly in free agency for nothing. If the Red Sox had their preference, I think, you know, they would choose to trade David Price and some of the other high-priced pitchers that they have as well, Nathan Eovaldi, probably not Chris Sale, but Chris Sale's salary not looking too good right now. So if the Red Sox can trim uh, some of their high-priced pitchers off their payroll, I think they would prefer that to trading Mookie Betts. But Mookie Betts might be their most marketable player, kind of like we're talking about with the Cubs and Chris Bryant. Not a player you want to trade. You don't want to trade your best player, but maybe he's the best trade chip and can get the most in return. We'll get a little more into Chris Bryant on Wednesday's uh, segment, Ian. What I find interesting, too, is when, you know, the Red Sox, you know, looking to to basically, you know, trim a payroll, that all doesn't always bode well for how the team is going to do. So if Mookie, Mookie Betts is not with the Red Sox in 2020, how good are the Red Sox going to be? Oh, gosh. They're certainly not going to be a, a – they're going to be a diminished team without Mookie Betts, no question about it. He's their best position player. You know, they still do have uh, quality players uh, like Xander Bogarts, uh, Andrew Benintendi. The, the players they could get in return, you know, if they do get Alex Verdugo, for instance, or uh, p- uh, pitcher Caleb Ferguson has been mentioned, uh, you know, th- that would help uh, make up for whatever they would lose with Mookie Betts. Betts has also been attached to the San Diego Padres in rumors. Will Myers is supposedly the centerpiece of San Diego's package, $67 million player. He still hits for power, but he does not hit for average. He hit only 239 last year. But they, you know, they could get somebody, a power hitting outfielder, maybe someone like Manuel Margot, who would fill in uh, in center field and also get some pitching help. So they, they would still be competitive but uh yeah you wonder especially uh, with the new york yankees and the tampa bay rays in that same division uh the improvements uh, that the chicago white Sox have made they if they're not a wild card contender uh could also be uh, an american league central contender so it's difficult to see the red sox's path to the postseason uh if they trade mookie Betts. boy i don't know how long red sox fans are going to handle this and, and put up with this 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 is gonna, this is going to be interesting they're not a very patient bunch up there no. in Massachusetts, for sure, man. Um, speaking of Massachusetts, we're going to uh, get uh, your favorite commercial uh, or two uh, from the uh, from Super Bowl 54. I think you know where I'm going with that. Um, but, Ian, let, let's talk about uh, former Asheville tourist Trevor Story. He will remain a Rocky for how long and for how much? Uh, Trevor Story, yeah, he signed a two-year, uh, 275 million dollar deal uh with with the rock two years 27 million dollars uh, that's a uh, mookie bets money right there uh, but only one year for bets basically this deal buys out the final two years of uh, trevor story's arbitration eligibility so 
it's guaranteed money for Story. He and the Rockies don't have to go to arbitration and fight over a salary. Those hearings can get contentious. And, and for the Rockies, even though they are paying, uh, they, they will be paying, you know, $18 million for Story in 2021. That is cost control. If they went to arbitration, you know, they don't necessarily have control over how much his salary would go up in 2020, uh, in 2021. So at least now they know how much exactly uh, they're going to be paying Trevor Story. And also, if you're Trevor Story, you know, you get uh, good, uh, really good money for two years. And when you become a free agent, maybe you see what the, the team has done with Nolan Arenado and what d- direction the Colorado yeah. Rockies are going in and uh, decide whether or not uh, you want to stick around Colorado after that. Interesting. Yeah, kind of a wait-and-see attitude. Ian Castleberry talking baseball with the Wise Guys presented by Vistanet Telecommunications. Former McDowell and Western Carolina standout Greg Holland coming back to uh, where he really made a name for himself, Kansas City. Here I come. Um, Ian, what are the, uh, the Royals' plan for the longtime closer? Yeah, this is kind of a nice story if it goes full circle for Greg Holland, probably ending his major league career if he makes the team with the team he began with. He signed a minor league deal. Uh, if he makes the team out of spring training, uh, he'll get a, a $1.25 million contract uh, in addition to uh, performance bonuses that he can meet throughout the season. So uh, I, I don't know if he'll, you know, he, he could probably be a, a setup man, a, a middle reliever if he makes the team. Uh, Holland, obviously not the pitcher uh, that, that he once was uh, after injuries uh, and surgery, but still, even though he had a 4-5-4 ERA last year for the Arizona Diamondbacks, he still has strikeout stuff, 41 strikeouts uh, in 36 innings. So he's someone who can still come in out of the bullpen and strike guys out when needed. Uh, Ian, before we uh, let you go, a couple more things still to get to. The Grandy Man, Curtis Granderson, announced his retirement over the weekend. And, you know, Ian, uh, he, he played for a number of teams in his 16-year uh, career, mostly with your Tigers, but also stints with the Mets and the Yankees. Um, but the Tigers is really where it all began. What are your memories of Granderson during the Tiger years? Uh, yeah, I was, I was hoping we could have the whole 5 o'clock hour to talk about Curtis <laughs> Granderson, but uh, no. He's, uh, I mean, I personally, I really like Curtis Granderson. He's one of the first major league players I ever interviewed. Really took time, uh, uh, you know, to, to answer my questions and share his thoughts on the game. Uh, not coincidentally, you know, he was also uh, new to the major league, so we were kind of both learning the ropes uh, to some extent. Granderson, I mean, he was an exciting player that the Tigers hadn't had in so many years. Uh, his 2007 season, you know, he had 302, 23 triples in that huge ballpark uh, in Comerica Park. Outstanding center fielder uh, defensively. It broke a lot of players' hearts when the Tigers traded him to the Yankees in 2010. But, you know, hit, hitting uh, a left-handed power hitter uh, in Yankee Stadium, you know, he had two 40 homer seasons. But what I'll remember most about Curtis Granderson, uh, I'll, not just an outstanding player, but he started his grandkids foundation there uh, to help uh, underprivileged children. Uh, he was an ambassador for Major League Baseball, you know, uh, conducting clinics in foreign countries. Really, uh, th- this is the kind of uh, player uh, baseball wants. You know, he should be the face of the game. He had an outstanding career. I think, yeah, it, he hit 183 last year for the Marlins. So it's time for him to hang it up. I would have loved to see him end his career one more year with the Tigers like Greg Holland is doing with the Royals. But yeah, Curtis Granderson, uh, six years uh, with the Tigers, and w- one of their uh, the best players they've had in recent years. Uh, Ian Castleberry with the Wise Guys. We're talking baseball and now Super Bowl commercials presented by Vistanet uh, Telecommunications. Uh, by the way, Ian, I believe, uh, first off, folks can find you. Check out the podcast. What you can go to, to, um, to iTunes and other platforms to get that, Ian? Yep. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, basically anywhere uh, you get your podcast, you can find my podcast. Sometimes extensions of what we're talking about here on the radio with sports, pop culture, uh, personal stories. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm hoping to work in some more interviews in the year to come. Hey, excellent. And also check Ian out, awfulannouncing.com, and follow them on Facebook as well. And Ian, I understand you uh, kind of put together, uh, wrote a, a story on on all of the different uh, Super Bowl 54 commercials. Which one or which one stood out to you? My favorite of the, the Super Bowl ads this year was uh, the Rocket Mortgage ad with Jason Momoa. Yeah. Uh, I thought that ad was absolutely hilarious. It was just a shocker, you know, when you see uh, Momoa walk into his house and he's peeling off his big muscle arms and he's got, like, these noodle <laughs> arms underneath. Pulls up his shirt, tears off his torso, and he's just got, like, this really skinny torso underneath and, and then pulls off that 
long hair of his and he's bald. Uh, I just thought that was absolutely hilarious. Ed. Yeah, absolutely. With you on that one. And his wife, I did, I forgot about that. Kathleen pointed it out. She's like, well, Lisa Bonet, his wife was there at the end, um, helping him like lift. Remember that when he was like lifting just a bar? <laughs> he was trying to bar, yeah, bench like, up the bar. Two that pounds. Was and he's freaking out. That was funny. <laughs> that one, I, I like the, uh, the Snickers one, the Snickers hole. Uh, oh yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one for, uh, current pop culture, uh, oh. and all the things that, that we find annoying, especially in internet culture. Yeah. The, yeah, uh, that, the, yeah. That was a really good. The one. two internet, the two of YouTube hipsters, you know, the boy, the guy <laughs> and the gal taking their selfie stick photo and they fall into the Snickers hole and the guy comes out and the last line is, it works <laughs> because all the annoying people are falling into this hole. That to me might have been the best one for sure. Was there one that, um, did not strike you? Uh, well, I was also going to say I really like the Bill Murray uh, Jeep ad. Yeah, the Mountain Dew ad with Brian Cranston, uh, w- which kind of emulated The Shining. <laughs> yeah, it was a really well done ad, uh, especially if you're a fan of that movie. But scaring the hell out of people to try and get them to to uh, you know buy your soft drink, I think, is a <laughs> yeah. very strange way to go for. Uh, <laughs> for a soft drink company. Yeah, no kidding. Although Cranston did an outstanding Jack Nicholson. Uh, we, 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 we will tell you that right now. That's outstanding. Ian, you're the best. Again, uh, you can follow Ian uh, by going to awfulannouncing.com and uh, also to like them on Facebook. This is a really talented writer. And Ian, always appreciate it, man. We got more baseball headlines coming up on Wednesday. I appreciate that, Pat. And yeah, looking forward to Wednesday. Thank you. You got it, my man. Appreciate it. Ian Castleberry uh, with the Wise Guys. Ian's appearance talking Major League Baseball presented uh, by our friends Andrea and Greg at Vistanet Telecommunications.